This week on Sport Fishing, we're heading over to Santa Cruz Island. We'll be fishing aboard the Mirage. We'll be targeting rockfish, looking for some halibut, and hopefully a white sea bass or two. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah, this is what fishing is like. I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. Nice white sea bass. Nice yeah. white sea bass. Yeah. Yes. Woohoo! All right. All right. Yeah. Sea bass. Fishing a B-52 bucktail right along the bottom here. We're drifting. There goes our captain. There's a fish right here. Let's see what we got here. Oh, nice halibut. Oh, yes. yes. Halibut. Yeah, all right. Nice <laughs> halibut on the bucktail. B-52 bucktail with a whole life squid four ounce model. Like we talked about, you have to worry about it being too uh, Fish on too the bow. Got another one going off the bow. All right, man. I told you about that bucktail, dude. Yeah. <laughs> this is the bucktail I was using, B-52 bucktail. Big, beautiful halibut. That's awesome. Woo! All right, well, let's take a little break from the action and go to the tackle box and give you a good look at the gear we're using for today's fishing trip for the Mirage. This week in the Tackle Box, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing this week. We're targeting halibut and white sea bass, and we're using live squid most of the time. And the way I like to fish live squid for the sea bass is to use the B-52 bucktail. I really like using a bucktail so I know exactly where my bait is at all time. And the way I'll fish it is I'll take a bucktail like this, either a two or four ounce model, let it go all the way to the bottom, and when it hits the bottom, I'm going to wind it up maybe four or five cranks, depending on what the skipper says. If he says that he's seen the fish swim by about five feet off the bottom or 20 feet off the bottom, I'm gonna bring my bucktail up to that area and then I'm just gonna work it slowly up and down, just raising my rod tip up and down and just want that thing to move in the current with the whole squid on there. If we have live squid, I have a live squid pinned on, but fresh dead works really good too. What's nice about fresh dead it's not alive, so it doesn't try to camouflage itself in. So it just kind of stays there. And with that whole squid onto a bucktail and just slowly moving in the current, you'll catch lots of fish. You don't want to let this sit on the bottom because all you're going to catch are bat rays and stingrays, sand sharks, stuff like that. You want to get it up off the bottom, move it around, get it in the current, and let those fish come up and find it. Not only will you catch a white sea bass that way, but you'll also catch halibut. Now, if you get in an area where you don't think there's white sea bass and you're just going to target halibut, this is a pre-made halibut rig. You can find these all over the place. Yeah, or you can make your own. And this one has a swivel on the bottom for the sinker, piece of line, and another swivel on top. And the way it's designed is for that swivel and that sinker to lay on the bottom 
and then your bait moves around. It can go up and down that line, but the sinker is going to be right on the bottom. The bait can't get too far away, but because you have that line on there on a swivel, it'll move around and look a lot more active than on a dropper loop rig. It has a lot more freedom. These rigs work really good. If you're going to use an anchovy, a hook like this is fine. If you're going to use live squid, you have to use a much bigger hook, 3.0, 5.0 hook, something like that. Sardines, the same thing, about a 3.0 hook, 2.0 hook. As far as rods and reels, you don't need something really heavy, but you don't want to go light either. With white sea bass and halibut around, something like this size with 30 pound, maybe even 40 pound if there's big white sea bass around, will work fine. When the fish are hungry, halibut and white sea bass are very aggressive, so don't worry about fishing 30 or 40 pound tests. I know it sounds kind of heavy, but really, the fish that we're catching in this week's episode, you're going to see are nice sized fish, and using 30 would be a minimum, and 40 pound having no problems catching fish on that too. This is the basic gear you need for today's trip. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Maybe. Barracuda. Oh, Barracuda. <laughs> There you go. Nice cooter. Got a nice little bear there, huh? Yep. Cooter on the bucktail, baby. In California, we have two different species of halibut. The California halibut, which is found from the Bay Area, even up to the Oregon border, down into Baja, Mexico. And then also the Pacific halibut, which lives all the way up in Alaska, can be found down to San Francisco. Both are very aggressive eaters, and we eat a variety of small bait fish, including herring, halibut, and sardines. Normally when you're fishing, you want to find the liveliest bait in the tank. But since we're fishing sea bass today, not necessarily the case. Um, a lot of times sea bass go for the deadest bait in the tank or one laying on the deck. There it is. Oh, nice sea bass. Oh yeah. Right, sea bass. On bucktail with a squid. This is Darren, he's out here fishing with his buddies. First time ocean fishing, and his very first ocean fish. First one right here, baby. Congratulations. On the head, huh? All right, nice job. And that's legal too, that's gonna taste good. Yeah, Only gotta be 12 inches. Now you gotta get sea bass. Get a sea bass. Come down. Yeah. Hey, I wouldn't. Your drag seems real tight. Yeah, I'd back it off a little bit. Don't you? Don't you? Oh, we're uh, fishing sea bass here. He's got one hooked. It's uh, almost a color. He's trying to just keep the, the rod bent, you know, to keep pressure on the fish so that he doesn't uh, slack the line off and have the hook pop out. So he's doing a real good job. The fish is straight up and down. It's real important to always keep the fish in front of you. That way uh, you don't have a bunch of big tangles like we just had there. Big sea bass. On the Dan Hernandez show, baby. Yeah! Nice sea bass. 20, Woo! 25 pounder. 
There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Good job, dude. Right on. Keep going. Keep going. We got a big fish hook here. He's doing everything right. He's got the, the rod bent. You know, he's just doing a slow, slow stroke to get up to the surface without slacking the line off. He's doing a good job getting it up. This drag's not too tight. Dang, lay it out when it comes up. You want to lay it out? Yep. Get it out of the water. Oh, wow. 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 Lay it sideways. Oh, oh damn. Woo Boom, chuck up there. Sir, big halibut. Yeah. This is Andre. He just caught this beautiful halibut. This really nice fish, man. Congratulations. I got a halibut earlier today, but not quite this big. This is really good. Okay, we're gonna take a little break from the action here, or the Mirage at Santa Cruz Island, and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these delicious fish that we're catching today here at Santa Cruz Island. All nice right. job. Thank you. This week in the galley, we're in Anaheim, California at Eat Street, and standing next to me is Kate. She's a chef here, and this is her own business where she does cooking lessons, and she's been kind enough to invite us down to show us how to cook up a fish dish. And what is it you have for us today, Kate? We are going to be making halibut with a chipotle adobo sun-dried tomato sauce. Cool, that sounds neat. So how do we get started? Going to take one or two tablespoons of chipotle, uh, depending on how much spice you like. I like spice. I do too. I like it spicy. So one if you're not into too much spice, two if you are into spice. So two tablespoons adobo, reconstituted sun-dried tomatoes in olive oil. And so in this situation, you're going to take a cup into here and into your blender. Then you're going to take a half cup of olives. They don't have to be chopped up crazy because your blender's gonna do the work for you. So you can chop them just a little bit, anchor it with your left hand. Just to break them up a little bit. Yep, and into your blender. Next thing you're going to need is a half cup of orange juice. Uh, this adds a little bit of tang, a little bit of sweetness. Then you're going to use a tablespoon of vinegar. I like to use apple cider vinegar, just because it's a little bit more complex than your generic distilled white vinegar. So apple cider vinegar into your blender. Two big pinches of pepper. Same thing with salt. So one pinch, two pinch. Does salt and pepper make that big of a difference in every dish? Because yes. just about every dish I see people add salt and pepper. The salt brings out the flavor of everything. It's crazy. When you're cooking, especially something like an onion, if you put salt in there, all of a sudden it's just vibrant. So yeah, salt's important. Next thing, you're gonna take a half of a diced onion right into your blender. And last but not least, just a little bit of olive oil to get it moving, about a tablespoon. Put your lid on and zoom it around. So that's our sauce and now. And we're right? done, easy. And that's easy. what's nice about halibut. It's, it's like a rockfish in the sense that it absorbs just about any flavor you add to it. Yeah, a normal portion is about five, so I'm gonna cut this in half. You wanna use a pan uh, that is not Teflon coated. Olive oil. You're gonna take your five ounces of halibut into your hot olive oil. So it's gonna cook just like this from the it's bottom cooking. up. It's cooking, look how quick it's yeah, cooking. Yeah, just like that. Uh, right after you put it in, you're gonna wanna loosen it up, just make sure it's not stuck. So if we were using a Teflon pan, it, the fish wouldn't taste as well? The, the flavors actually stick to the bottom of the pan, so whether it's pork or beef or fish, you always want to use this kind of a pan. I always say Teflon's just for eggs and crepe. The beauty about halibut is it's a flaky fish, uh -huh. and when cooked just right, mm -hmm. it will be flaky and melt in your mouth. You want to make sure you don't overcook it. When it meets in the middle, it's, it's done. If you keep cooking it just like chicken, it will get tough even if you're starting with the best of the best. With a five ounce piece of fish, it's gonna take about eight minutes. Put it right onto your plate. Kind of salsa. Goes just right over the top like this. Try some of the sauce, the magic secret sauce. Not a secret anymore. <laughs> that is good. Isn't it good? The sauce. That sauce I love. You can even use that like on a fish taco. Yeah, 
This is really great. You guys have to try this dish. Cook this at home. It's just a beautiful, great dish. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Dan. We appreciate you helping us out today. Of course. And Kate's located in Anaheim, California. You can go to our website and get more information. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Bass. <laughs> if he gets out of the weeds, come on, shake your head over. Yeah. Look at that bass. See what I did is I just went opposite of what he said, like he told me. Yeah, but what he's telling you is for calicos, not for those. <laughs> well, I wasn't going for calicos. I was going for these. That sounds like a you problem. Yeah. Find huh? me an opening. There he is. Come on, get out of there. Come on. Johnny Bear. Johnny. Sugar Bear. Close. I was looking at you and I got bit. Talk You're the lucky guy. guy. Yeah. Don't get too excited though. There we go. Oh, there we go. Check Tucker said go to the bottom. I went on top. What can I say? Tree fish. We're here at the the front side of Santa Cruz Island at uh, Twin Harbors here. But I'm uh, trying to catch a bass, but we're picking at the rockfish pretty good. So <laughs> I'll take it. Nice tree fish. What was your number? Seven. All right, bud. Yep. Not quite 12 inches. Right under the boat, huh? Um. The guy that cooked with the with the nice sugar bass over here, <laughs> Kelly, sugar bass. Pay for the rental cost for that way? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. she oh, is. Very she buff. woke up. <laughs> 16 ounce bucktail. Yeah! Yeah! 
This is Ed, he just caught this monster halibut, a go right around 50 pounds, maybe a little over 50 pounds. Just quality fish, congratulations, man. Thank you, Dan. It's a big fish, probably be our jackpot fish of the day, definitely the biggest fish so far. We got one more drift to go, but we're gonna take a little break from the action, and when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. What was the largest recorded Pacific halibut? Was it 350 pounds? 450 pounds or 550 pounds? Well, the correct answer is 450 pounds. For this week's tip of the week, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how we caught all these fish today. Got big white sea bass, monster halibut, and some of them were taken on bucktails, like the halibut I caught, and some of them were just taken on dropper loop rigs, but the big trick was to use fresh dead. And the reason for that, according to our skipper Tucker, was that the live squid sometimes will camouflage itself in with the ocean bottom, and it'd be harder for the fish to see it. But that fresh dead, because it can't change its colors or anything, the fish, it's a lot easier for them to recognize it, see it, and they jump all over it. And that's this week's tip. If you're on a boat and you're having trouble catching fish with live squid, go ahead and use a fresh dead, and you'll do even better. Well, I want to thank our skipper, Tucker, everybody aboard the Mirage. We had lots of fun fishing on here today. Been on this boat many times in the past. I'll be back again. Coming out here to the Channel Islands, you never know what to expect. It could be rockfish or it could be like today. Some monster white sea bass and even bigger halibut. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing. <laughs>